Grace and peace in the name of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Aaron Grant of Christ Church in Floyd, New York, and you are watching Daily Bread, a daily Bible devotional to help us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Today is June 12th, so we'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 12, and we'll be looking at the topic of counsel and counseling as we look to the Word of God. So as we begin, let's ask for the Lord's blessing in our time. Lord, we thank you for another day of life that you have given to us, and we thank you for your word, and we uh, pray that your word would be a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. We thank you that your word is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword that penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of our hearts. And uh, we pray now that our hearts would be submissive and ready to read uh, hear your instruction, and to walk in it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 12 and verses 15 through uh, 28. And as we read these verses, I've highlighted those verses that stand out um, about counsel and counseling. So Solomon says that the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. A fool's anger is known at once, but a prudent man conceals dishonor. He who speaks truth tells what is right, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks rashly like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace have joy. No harm befalls the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the slack hand will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs it down, but a good word makes it glad. The righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. A lazy man does not roast his prey, but the precious possession of a man is diligence. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. Well, today as we look at the topic of counsel and counselors, we look and learn here in chapter 12 um, about the importance of counsel, that the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. And to help us think about what counsel is, you can see how uh, the the word translated here for counsel, the Hebrew etzah, is used. So this word for counsel is used 86 times in the Old Testament, here in verse 15. A wise man is he who listens to counsel. So sometimes this word etza is translated also, as you can see, as advice or as a a plan. Uh, Isaiah 30 says and uses the same word, Woe to the rebellious children, declares the Lord, who execute a plan, an etza, but not mine, and make an alliance, but not of my spirit, in order to add sin to sin. So as we think about counsel and planning, We need to be thinking and remembering that God has a plan. God has given us counsel in his word. Sometimes this word is translated for um, as purpose. So again, the way of a a fool is right in his own eyes. Again, just thinking about our own understanding without reference to God's counsel. So so in um, Isaiah 46, uh, we learn about God's counselor's purpose. Isaiah says in chapter 46, verse 10, uh, the Lord speaking through the prophet, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient things which have not been done, saying, my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. As we think about giving counsel or um, listening to counsel, we need to remember that God has also given his counsel. He's given his messengers that we are to be listening to. So as we think, what are my plans and my purposes in life? We need to be thinking, how do they line up with what God has revealed? So the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. So it doesn't give 
heed to God's plans and God's counsel, and it just seems right because it's right to me, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. Now, you think about kings in the Old Testament. So think about the first king, King Saul. Now, King Saul had counselors, and King Saul's best counselor was Samuel the prophet. So in the book of Samuel, named after Samuel the prophet, the prophet Samuel was the one who anointed the first kings of Israel. But you remember that Samuel, who had anointed Saul as king over Israel, Saul did not listen to Samuel's godly and wise counsel. So Saul was one who did things that was right in his own eyes, and he did not listen to the plan and the purpose of the Lord. Uh, in fact, in 1 Samuel chapter 13, um, when he, Saul had been commanded by Samuel to wait before offering the sacrifice, Samuel says to him, what have you done? And Saul said, because I saw what the people, that the people were scattering from me and that you did not come within the appointed days and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, therefore I said, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal and I have not asked the favor of the Lord. So I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. Samuel said to Saul, you have acted foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have you establish, would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. So again, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. So in his own eyes, Saul, Saul saw that the situation was getting worse and worse. But even though he had been given the command by Samuel to wait, Saul made a judgment according to his own eyes, his own understanding, his own plans, his own counsel. And he did not wait for the prophet Samuel as God had commanded him. Therefore, he acted foolishly. So this is how the first king of Israel acted. I've given in the lower left-hand corner of your screen a picture of the tabernacle because the temple had not yet been built. But it's the, the same idea looking to the tabernacle was a looking to God's revelation. It was looking to God's covenant. It was looking to God's law, his counsel. Now, of course, Solomon's father, David, also had many counselors. The priest Abiathar was an advisor to King David. Nathan the prophet was an advisor to David. But one of the things that distinguished David from Saul is that David listened to wise counsel even when he turned his back on the Lord, whereas Saul did not. And so David also, like Saul, acted foolishly. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, that it happened in the spring at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel, and they destroyed the sons of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed at Jerusalem. Now when evening came, David arose from his bed and walked around on the, on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful in appearance. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? So here again, we have the counsel of the Lord. David is doing what is right in his own eyes based on what he sees. Our sinful flesh is a very poor counselor. Our sinful flesh will ultimately lead to death. So David's sinful flesh, his, the lusts of the flesh, are aroused. He's walking on his roof and he looks at a, a woman bathing. So that's a violation of which one of the commandments? You shall not commit adultery. That would be the seventh commandment. And, and it's explained to him. This is the wife of Uriah. Uriah was one of David's finest fighting men. And he was on the front lines while David had stayed in Jerusalem. So David also acted foolishly like Saul. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. So David, when he was told this is the wife of Uriah the Hittite, he didn't listen to the counsel of the Lord. He didn't listen to the counsel of God's law. But later, after David's sins, the counselor Nathan is sent to him. 
And in 2 Samuel, Nathan says to David, you are the man. You you are guilty of taking the wife of another man and, and having that man then put to death. And David responded to Nathan saying, I have sinned against the Lord. Wisdom is something that we can practice when we are wrong. So this is the, what one of the things that makes David different than Saul. And we don't usually think of wisdom this way. But wisdom is admitting we are wrong and God or someone else is right. Wisdom is repentance and turning back to God and confessing that God is right. One of my favorite sayings of, about, uh, uh, comes from a fool about wise counsel. And it comes from the lips of foolish king Ahab. Now, you remember that Ahab was the king in the north, and I've given you a picture of the map I've shown before. This is a time when the kingdom was divided between the north and the south. The north was Israel, and the south was Judah. Ahab was one of the most wicked kings uh, in the north, and he had a wicked wife, Queen Jezebel. So he had a very poor counselor uh, in Jezebel. And Ahab is now teaming up in this text with the king of the south. Now, the king of the south in Judah, his name at this time was Jehoshaphat. Now, Ahab really, really wanted to go to war and take back some land from the king of Aram. But Ahab couldn't do it on his own. He needed godly Jehoshaphat's help. And so, in 1 Kings chapter 22, Jehoshaphat, the son of David, the son of Solomon, agrees to help wicked Ahab out. And he says, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. So in other words, all right, I'll I'll help you out, Ahab. But before they went to war, godly King Jehoshaphat said, you know, Ahab, we really should inquire of the Lord first. And we want, because we need to see what God thinks about this. So we have our plans and our purposes But we should inquire and see, well, what are God's plans and purposes? Because we want to be following the Lord. So let's get God's counsel about this. Now, of course, the the problem and part of the irony of all of this is that Ahab, the northern king, had different priests and different prophets, a different worship center. Remember, they're, they're worshiping at Dan and Bethel and the golden calves. Jehoshaphat is from the south, where you have the true priests, the true prophets, and true worship. But regrettably, what happens is that Ahab then gathers his false prophets. So the king of Israel, who's Ahab in verse 6, gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I refrain? And they said, Go up, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there yet not a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. He is Micaiah, son of Imlah. But Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. This is one of my favorite sayings of the fool about wise counsel. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. He is Micaiah, son of Imla. So Micaiah was seeking. So again, the way in which Ahab interpreted this is that um, Micaiah never says what I want to hear. And again, think about what Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. So Ahab is the the foolish king. He is turned away from the Lord, and he's always right. And it's going to seem like Micaiah is always wrong, because Micaiah's message probably sounded the same over and over and over again. Repent and turn back to the Lord. You need to be going to Jerusalem. You need to stop listening to these false prophets and false priests. And so what happened is that Ahab interprets Micaiah's wise, godly counsel as evil. And sadly, there is an unhappy ending to this story because neither king listens to the counsel given by Micaiah. The 400 false prophets said, yeah, go ahead and go against Ramoth Gilead and the Lord will give you victory. That's exactly what Ahab wanted to to hear. 
But Micaiah told and counseled Ahab and Jehoshaphat what God's plans and counsel was. And so sadly, both kings went to the battlefield and both King Ahab and Jehoshaphat died. Now, perhaps you think the same thing about godly counsel as Ahab did. Or maybe you're a godly man or woman. Jehoshaphat was a godly king. But for some reason, he ended up becoming friends with Ahab in the north. So it might seem to you sometimes like your dad or your mom or your teacher or your pastor seem to tell you what you never want to hear. But perhaps the reason is that they love you and because they know, as this chapter ends, that in the way of righteousness is life and in its pathway there is no death. So again, there there are many things and plans that we want to do that we feel strongly about. But how does God and what has God said about that? Sometimes you're going to hear and give counsel that others don't want to hear. Maybe nobody will listen to you, like Micaiah. Nobody listened to Micaiah, the godly prophet. But that's all right, because we want to be turned and turning others so that we might fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So please pray with me. Lord, we thank you so very much for another day of life that you have given to us. And we thank you for uh, the clear teaching of your word that in the way of righteousness is life and in its pathway there is no death. And we thank you for the different kinds of counsel and counselors that you give to us. And I pray that you would help us through the work of your spirit and help us to show discernment in the counselors that we are surrounded by and making sure that the counselors that we are listening to have the same goal as you do, the goal of life, that their goal would be glory and not just this life only. And again, we thank you, Jesus, that one of your names is Wonderful Counselor. And uh, we, again, thank you, Father and Son, and pray that you would now lead us in your ways and give us a heart to walk in them. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen be now worshiping the Lord with Psalm 1, the A selection. And as we sing Psalm 1, the very first verse of the first psalm has to do with counsel. That man is blessed who does not walk as wicked men advise, nor stand where sinners sit, nor scorners pose as wise. So the the same word for counsel is actually used here in verse 1. So we're not going to be listening to the counsel of the wicked, but we are going to be counseled by God's word. So please join with me as we sing Psalm 1, the A selection. That man is blessed who does not walk as wicked men advise, nor stand where sinners meet, nor sit where scorners pose as wise. Instead he is the one who makes the Lord's law his delight, and in that law he meditates by day and in the night. He's like a deeply planted tree beside a water stream, which in its season bears its fruit, Whose leaves stay fresh and green. In all he does, he will succeed. The wicked are not so, but they are like the scattered chaff swept by the winds that blow. The wicked, therefore, will not stand when time of judgment comes. Stand among assembled righteous ones Because the Lord the righteous loves The path they walk he knows The wicked walk a different path That to destruction goes I'm thankful you're able to join us for another episode of Daily Bread Devotion. And Lord willing, I'll be back on Monday morning at 9 a.m. for another episode. 
And we will also be live streaming our worship service this Lord's Day at 11. So you can watch here this Sunday at 11 here on Facebook. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Oh. 